First, we have alopecia areata. In this condition, you'll have well-demarcated discrete patches of complete hair loss. This is an autoimmune T-cell mediated disease. When you have an autoimmune disease, you're more likely to have other autoimmune diseases present as well. So for example, in the HPI, the patient might also have vitiligo or pernicious anemia or some thyroid condition as well. The treatment for this is intralesional steroids. And with this, it won't necessarily completely resolve and it could come back again as well. Next, we have trichotillomania. This is when patients are pulling out their own hair. It's an impulse control issue, so they can't really stop it. It's a psychiatric illness. So the treatment for this can be SSRI or CBT. Because they're pulling out their hair and random parts of their scalp, they're not going to have discrete patches of hair loss like the last condition. And also their hair will be at different length, depending on like where they're pulling it out. Next, we have pseudofolliculitis barbae. In this condition, you'll have small pain full papules, usually in the beard area. There can be like tiny curled facial hair that hair shaft penetrates into the interfollicular skin. So some complications that can occur are hyperpigmentation, infections, possibly even keloid formation. So to help treat this, you tell the patient to stop shaving and then try to use some other alternative method to remove the facial hair. Next, we have keratosis pilaris. This is basically when you have retained keratin plugs in the hair follicles. And the most common area for this to occur is usually on the upper arms and like the back part of the arms. They'll have kind of a rough skin texture and patients will complain about having like itchy skin when it's cold or dry outside. And to treat this, you just have to moisturize the skin if it's not going away. Um, dermatologists can prescribe like a medicated cream. And lastly, we have telogen effluvium and anagen effluvium. So telogen effluvium occurs during the resting phase of the hair growth cycle and anagen effluvium occurs during the growth stage. So for Telogen effluvium, this occurs after a stressor is affecting your body. So for example, when you're studying for boards, you're really stressed and you might start noticing you're losing more hair. But this won't happen right away. It takes some time. So maybe like a couple weeks after you've finished boards or into board study, you'll notice hair loss. Medications can also cause some stress in the body. So that can also cause telogen effluvium to occur. Now, antigen effluvium, this is very common after starting chemotherapy and the onset of this is much quicker. So within like a week or two usually of starting chemo, patients will start noticing some hair loss.